Hello everybody, it's Two Siders here, bringing you yet another high testosterone video. Uh, why is it high testosterone? Well, because this one is a bit weird. Um, as you can see in the background, uh, I'm building the sea otter exhibit. And uh, I didn't really know how else to make it, but to record footage, speed it up and then talk over it. So what we'll do is we'll build the sea otter and the leatherback sea turtle exhibit. And uh, I'll talk a little bit about the animals and uh, my inspiration for why I chose to do these exhibits for them. Uh, so this is a really, really extreme one, the sea otter one. As you can see, it's uh, very, very hilly and crazy. So what was I going to do? Are these like goats or something? And actually, no. Uh, my inspiration for the sea otter exhibit um, was because the Ainu people, uh, if you don't know the Ainu um they are a tribe of people that lived in Japan, but they look very, very different from uh, Japanese people. They don't look uh, Japanese whatsoever. Uh, I think they are some sort of like Islander people that uh, went to live in Japan a couple of thousand years ago. Well, anyways, they, uh, they're similar to, I guess, the uh, Eskimos up north, but, you know, they are not living in the same area. However, they have a lot of similar practices where, you know, they fish a lot. They are fishermen people. And uh, in the Ainu legends, the otter is portrayed as a messenger between God and man. In Ainu, folk in Ainu folklore, lovers who plunge themselves into the water become otters. Um, so this was my inspiration where I was thinking maybe like it would be really cool to have this like cliff face exhibit where, you know, what if like guests throw themselves down the the cliffs because they are you know they love somebody and then they became otters um, so this is what I did I created this sort of like pirate theme as well at the very end um, I ended up putting a lighthouse on that little island in the middle as you can see guests can go there and it's really really cool anyways sea otters uh, their numbers their population used to be quite insane uh, there used to be around 150,000 to 300,000 sea otters uh, before uh, 1741 uh, and the reason why I say a specific year 1741 is because that's when they were hunted between 1741 and 1911 haha <laughs> 911 joke yeah I get it so until 9 uh, 1911 uh, they were hunted and the population from that like 150 300,000 went down to one or two thousand how crazy is that only one or two thousand remained after 1911 um, they live in the north pacific oceans coast uh, they are about 14 to 45 kilograms that's quite a lot you know of uh fluctuation which is uh, 31 to 100 pounds and um they are about 1.2 to 1.5 meters uh, long uh, which is about four to five feet and their maximum age recorded was 23 years so actually they are the heaviest members of the weasel family they are actually heavier than the giant otter uh, you must have seen the giant otter they live in the Amazonas I think the Amazon River they're really really huge bigger than the sea otter however the sea otters are much stockier because of their fur they have one of the they have the densest fur in the animal kingdom, actually. And they can also live exclusively in the water. Wow. Uh, they use rocks to open up shells. Uh, a lot of people know that. And they control sea urchin populations who would otherwise eat up all the kelp forests. So they're really useful for the environment. It's important to have them. Um, they have six inch... <laughs> okay. <laughs> I forgot about this part. They have a six inch penis. North Pacific human tribes use sea otter parts in rituals and healing. So like the Ainu use them and other tribes as well. And I already talked about how uh, the Ainu see them as like really human-like. And the reason for that is because um, sea otters are human-like because they're really cheerful and they also use tools like we do. And I have a video to show you. I have a few videos to show you guys, but uh, this one is about the sea otter. 
So in the absence of mom, we really have to fill a large role for these guys. Thanks to the pup's completely buoyant pup coats, at the very least, they don't drown. But in the wild, they can just float away. Yeah, the pups can float away. And uh, anyways, this is uh, just a short video to show you the animal in the real life. Uh, credit, you can see the title, you can look it up if you want. And uh, yeah, we are almost at the very end of our journey in creating this sea otter exhibit. And uh, soon we'll start to do the leatherback sea turtle exhibit, which is much, much, much larger. And I hope to make a ton of leatherback sea turtles because they are actually critically endangered. So yeah, a lot of problems I had with the sea otter exhibit later, uh, but we'll see that in the uh, next part of the video after this one. So I had um, at least like idea for the leatherback sea turtle exhibit where it's a bit similar to the sea turtle exhibit we have on the other side of the zoo you know a little bit tropical a little bit of waterfalls but i realized that i'm using so like I, I do waterfalls all the fucking time and it's might be a bit boring for you guys to see so i i got rid of a couple of them at least uh, so i like these little like steps i was thinking maybe on this little part of the zoo they could go and uh lay their eggs. I know they are not going to do that because why would anything be perfect? Uh, they, they will probably lay their eggs, uh, these leatherback sea turtles, uh, closer to that pathway you can see on the right because there's going to be a bit of land there. But anyways, um, so I made that little like waterfall bit and uh, you'll see in a second I make much deeper water because leatherback sea turtles prefer uh, pelagic waters and as we discussed before pelagic is open sea you know it's very very deep there are there's no foliage whatsoever no rocks no nothing i did put some foliage at the shore because i thought it would be more realistic you know but obviously we can't have like an open ocean in the park so that's what you'll get uh speaking about the leatherback uh sea turtles and i just have to do this a turtle made it to the water. I had to do it. You know I had to do it to them. <laughs> so leatherback sea turtles are, are really, really huge. Um, one other name they are called is uh, Luth. L-U-T-H. They are the fourth heaviest reptilian after free cro crocodiles. So uh, it's the heaviest turtle that we have that is not extinct. Okay. Um, the fourth heaviest reptile the only heaviest reptiles we have are crocodiles so obviously that's like no competition like this is a huge turtle it's 1.8 to 2.2 meters uh, huge like the shell with the head the length of that uh, which is around six to seven feet and they can be anything anywhere between you know 250 to 700 kilograms which is 500 to 1500 pounds that's really, really heavy. Uh, very little is known about their lifespan because they are just so rare and, you know, they live in the open ocean. Um, a lot of scientists said, you know, 30. Some of them said 100. So it's anything between uh, 30 and 100 years. It's crazy. Uh, so Seri people. Uh, who are from Mexico. Seri people are uh, indigenous Mexicans, I guess. Uh, they say that this turtle, uh, they keep what they keep this turtle species as one of their five creator animals. So it's like a god animal for them. Uh, Seri people celebrate when a turtle is caught and then they release it back to the wild. That's, that's really nice. I have some videos to show you guys. Uh, I have two videos to show you, one of them is a bit like, I don't know what to call it, it scares me to be honest, they look like spiders, so um, baby turtles being born. <laughs> got a leader. This is so cool. Don't forget that you can follow the babies all the way to the water. So yeah. Uh, go check out this video if you're interested. I don't I don't know if I talked about the green sea turtles uh, Let's talk about them as well in this video uh, Because I forgot to do that. There's a couple of interesting information that overlaps with the um, 
Leatherback Sea Turtles. The Green Sea Turtle, so the one that we have in the other like Laguna exhibit, uh, is free to ho the largest one recorded was three to four hundred kilograms, eight hundred pounds. Um, and the difference between green sea turtles and leatherback sea turtles, uh, leatherback sea turtles don't have the shell. They have like very leathery shell. Uh, they're completely dark, you know, they're completely black leatherback sea turtles. Uh, green sea turtles are, you know, anything from like the puke color <laughs> to like green. Um, and more importantly, sea turtles eat kelps. A lot of kelps, a lot of uh, sea grass. But leatherback sea turtles actually eat uh, jellyfish. And the inside of a leatherback sea turtle mouth, I don't want to show you guys because it's really scary looking. There's a lot of barbs uh, going backwards. It looks really dangerous. Whereas a normal sea turtle has just the beak, like sort of like a bird beak. And one more interesting information that I think overlaps is that so green sea turtles, the herbivores, uh, their hatchling incubation time and sex it is uh, determined by temperature. So the warmer temperature, the quicker they hatch. But also, uh, if the eggs are in a cooler than 30 centimeter, uh, sorry, not centimeters. <laughs> if the eggs are in cooler than 30 uh, Celsius degrees, then they are going to be males. If it's warmer than 30 Celsius degrees, then they are going to be females. So that's how temperature um, uh, determines the sex of the turtles. And I'm pretty sure it's the same for a leatherback sea turtle, but don't quote me on that. So yeah, I finished the exhibit. Uh, I, don't, I didn't really like it that much. Uh, I feel like it needs a little bit of work, but maybe you guys like it. I put the uh, foliage you know, near the shore. I put some rocks everywhere, so it's a bit more realistic. Uh, maybe I should put some rocks in the waterfalls next time I play and I also I'm gonna put some so I I'm like I was like yeah no more waterfalls there's too many waterfalls that I do I had a cool idea of uh, making that uh, that part that I'm doing right now um, shallow water and I'm putting like starfish you know anemas uh, and it, look, it looked really cool I think it looked kind of like the touch zoo where we have uh, the food stuff I also am gonna put soon some palm trees near the, I guess, egg nesting area that I wanted for the turtles. So it looks a bit more, you know, realistic, a bit more like tropical islands, I guess. One more video I wanna show you um, is how huge these uh, leatherback sea turtles are. I guess they can even grow larger than this. Uh, there's a really famous David Attenborough uh, video, but I, I thought like all of you guys have seen that already, so I picked this one instead. Yeah, it's laying its eggs. A bit scary, no? A little bit scary. So thank you, uh, Puck Channel, for the video. Go check it out if you want. And uh, we still have a lot of working to do on this exhibit. Um, I had this idea where uh, I always wanted to have an underwater section. Because I feel like Pelagic really shines, you know, more underwater. There's always like water <laughs> left over. It's a bit annoying. And uh, what I did at the end, like, again, again, even more water. Come on. Don't waste my time, please. What I did at the end was make it even deeper than this because I felt like it wasn't doing it justice. And I put all the jellyfish feeders uh, next to that so you know guests could actually see them. A couple of benches and whatnot so guests can sit down, you know, obviously donation box. And I made it a little bit pretty. I used the reef. Uh, I used some reef foliage. Yeah, I really like those uh, plate corals. They're really cool, I think. I like the different colors that you can get. You know, it's even more having a little bit of uh, a difference between the colors of the of the plants and how they look like. It's just a little bit more uh, 
gameplay, I guess, time that you can spend, you know, doing different stuff. A little bit more content is what I'm trying to say in the game. And I also had the idea of having uh, a place for food stuff, but instead of putting it to this like natural underwater section, I created elevated bridges. I created elevated bridges where the shallow water part is with the starfish and the anima that I told you about. Uh, but the problem is the guests, the way the guests are, I guess, um, programmed, maybe it's just the children, but guests really like elevated pops. So not many people actually ended up going to the underwater section where the feeders are. They are most like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna go up the elevated pop, how cool is that? And to be fair, like in real life, wouldn't you go there as well? Like, wouldn't you just uh, go to the elevated section instead of like anywhere else? It's kind of cool, you know. But in a water park, I don't know, like if there was an underwater like a window, like on the left we see here, I would probably go there instead. No? Wouldn't, wouldn't, don't you guys think the same? I guess you would check out everything at the end of the day. The only annoying part about zoos and I guess supermarkets as well is that when they don't have benches, I fucking hate that. In this game I, I'm like, I, I put benches everywhere because guests to be fair need them and they like to sit down to eat. I don't know. I, I really hate walking. Not that I hate walking, it's just like, especially when you like, you don't go out that much and then you go to like, oh yeah, I'll go to a zoo. You're not used to it whatsoever. You're not used to walking that much and you just want to sit down constantly and your feet hurt and it's like, after a day of walking around, it doesn't matter if you sit down for an hour, your, your feet are still gonna hurt. So yeah, the manatees are, uh, breeding that's nice I ended up sending away so many turtles like I couldn't actually wait for this uh, green sea turtles to grow up and then send them to the wild I had to uh, put the babies up for adoption and it doesn't matter at this point sending more animals back to the wild doesn't give us any more fame because we already reached the maximum because of the marlins I feel like there should have been a better um, like gameplay element for sending animals back to the wild as I said before uh, the thing I liked about wildlife park the first one like 2d version that looked like zoo tycoon 1 was that uh, you could get money for um, putting animals up for for sale yeah I don't buy the sea turtles yet I don't think but uh, there's gonna be a live commentary version of this video uh, where I do so don't worry about that we also buy the sea otters I also spend a fuck ton of time just messing around, uh, trying to place the sea otters. Uh, not only the training area, the training area was horrible, to be fair, but because you have to have super deep water for the training area. But I'm also talking about uh, the connection, the connecting part between the sea otters and the, the show part. Well, luckily at the end we'll figure it out, so don't worry about that. So yeah, uh, putting the palm trees there, uh, and I'm like, yeah, I should put like reef because the the pelagic brown, uh, the brown leafy part, the, the brown grassy part just doesn't match. And I'm trying out different uh, palm trees here, uh, but I ended up going with the just like the desert one, and again a banana tree from the jungle. There's just so many palm trees in this game. And it's funny because the desert one looks the most like tropical islandy instead of the tropical, you know, jungle one. Yeah, I need some more rocks, I think. The rocks just look really nice next to the shoreline. Um, I like putting them next to rivers and waterfalls. It's a bit, I guess, I don't know if it's like that in real life, but it looks good to me. Yeah. So many of these pilot wheels just get stranded, uh, not because, not really so many of them, but they're just so, there's just so many, the number of pilot wheels is just so damn huge that, uh, you know, every now and then a couple of them go into the, the land. And the way this game works is that 
some error messages and some like even like good messages have the same doo -doo, uh, error sound and sometimes you just don't pay attention to the, uh, the sound or you, know, you do something else and oh yeah by the way one of your animals stranded on the land you should save it in like 10 seconds or it's gonna die so it's hard to pay attention to that um, I had a lot of work with this uh, marine zoo honestly it might be a nice, uh, I guess, breath of fresh air to start in a different park. Uh, because just there's so many management that's going on with... Uh, oh, staff members can't reach your animals. You can't assign staff members to exhibits. Um, because the way the game is programmed is stupid. So you have to do a lot of stuff yourself. You get a lot of error messages. And uh, that's it. So thank you so much for watching. I shall see you in the next one. Bye-bye.